So, let me paint you a picture. You're at the end of a death march, and you've spent the last three months getting all the features ready for your prospective client. But there's a problem. How is the client actually going to install the software? You figure, what the heck? You cobble a table, uh, cobble together a table, attach it to an email, hit send, and clock off. It worked in dev, it's ops problem now. Um, you rock up at 9.45 a.m. the next Monday and your inbox has exploded and unfortunately the boss wants your head. Um, the customer couldn't install the software and when they did eventually get it running, they got owned 15 minutes later by the, loaded, by the latest OpenSSL exploit. So how can you get better assurance that the software you're building and shipping does what it says on the box? For this, we're using ServiceBec. So what is ServiceBec? Uh, service Spec is a framework for testing infrastructure and applications. It's built on top of RSpec, a popular Ruby testing framework. It uses standard RSpec syntax, so you can use all of the existing RSpec functions. Um, there's lots of resources on the web to help you get started, and uh, it's generally pretty simple. Um, you can run it via SSH or using Vagrant or locally. Just going to look at a, a quick example of uh, output from a service spec run. Um, so here we're uh, looking at a log file of Flapjack, the flapjack.log. Uh, we're asserting that it should be a file that's green, so that's passed. Uh, it should have permissions 644, which it does, so that's passed. But it should be owned by Flapjack, and it's not. Um, so that's failed, and it's red. Um, so it's all pretty, pretty obvious to see. Um, and if you look further down, you can see uh, the assertion owned by Flapjack should return true, but it got false. And at the last line, um, you can see this, the stat command that it's actually using under the hood that's part of service spec. Um, you can run that command in the target environment to replicate the, replicate the output. So it's pretty accessible and helpful and tells you, tells you where to go. So why should you use service spec? Um, one big reason is to automate your QA. Um, humans miss things in QA and they don't necessarily do things the same way every time. Um, QA can, uh, humans can only do QA during certain parts of the day. Um, it's considered bad to lock them in the basement. Quite sad. Um, humans are hard to scale. Um, it's difficult to just get more humans during the busy periods of testing. Um, but service spec will keep testing and testing and testing uh, the same way every time at any way of the day or night at any time of the day or night, rather. Um, you can validate your expectations. You can run service spec against your development code to check that files are being created as you expect. Um, it's a more concise form of cucumber tests. You can fail early. Um, you can have service spec run as part of your build procedure, and when the tests fail, just have the entire build fail. Um, you'll never publish a build that doesn't work, because we've all done that. You can validate your, your output. Uh, for CLI tools, you can run commands and check that the standard out and standard error actually give what you expect. Um, because service spec integrates with Vagrant, you can easily test on multiple versions of multiple operating systems. This, of course, can be automated, so you can test all your operating systems uh, using different Vagrant boxes during the one build, which is nice. Um, with all of this, you have a much better chance of your release working as you expect. As a bonus, you'll free up your QA people to write more service spec tests and capybara tests for the GUI elements, of course. Cool. So how might you use service spec? I'm just going to look at some quick examples of the resource types that service spec makes available to you, uh, first as a developer and then as a sys sysadmin. So as a developer, uh, package installation. Uh, so it's one thing uh, we use it uh, for is, uh, so if you install your package in the target environment, um, typically a VM or your local uh, environment, um, you can run these, run these service spec tests and it'll check that your package is installed. Um, and this is also testing that, it's, that it is enabled. Uh, That's command... enabled on boot. Sorry? That's enabled on boot. Yeah. Um, command execution, so service spec can log into your test environment, run a command, uh, verify the exit status, uh, in this case should equal zero, so it didn't fail, um, that the standard output includes the word port and the standard error includes the word interval or whatever you like. Um, you can check for running processes. Um, 
So this is uh, when we uh, install a Flapjack package on Ubuntu and uh, Debian, uh, we have uh, Flapjack automatically uh, start, uh, as is the convention on Debian-based uh, platforms. So after the package is installed, uh, we can assert that uh, Flapjack is running, um, and then the processor's arguments uh, should include server start, file presence and permissions. Um, so we're looking at the log file. Uh, the log file should be created. Um, it should be a file, so not a symlink or a directory or uh, something else. It's just a plain file um, that it should have uh, defined permissions. What will happen in that case if you've got, like, set UID or set UID on that file? It's still 644, but there's a 2 or a 4 at the bottom. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I don't think anyone's actually thought of that yet. <laughs> uh, uh, we up. certainly haven't needed to use it in the Flapjack project. We can look up the docs after the, after the main presentation and check it out. Um, so yeah, file ownership, uh, so who, who the files are owned by and which group or groups, uh, sorry, group the file has. Um, you can test for uh, hashes of files. Uh, this is doing a SHA-256 sum of etc. services. Um, so that's verifying that the file hasn't been corrupted or that it's the right version of the file. Maybe you update that file as part of your, uh, part of your package installation. Um, and finally, you can test that uh, a port is open. Um, so when Flapjack starts, it listens on port 3080 by default. Um, and this is just yeah, verifying that it uses netstat under the hood to check that that port is in fact now open. So, uh, there are various ways that you can use server spec as a sysadmin, and one of the big ones is after running Puppet on a server. Um, server spec doesn't just test a file existence, it also checks the type, i.e. whether it's a file or a symlink or a directory. Um, and you can also check the contents of files, both checking for strings and regular expressions. Uh, this can be restricted to finding strings before or after another string in the file, or between two strings as you like. Um, Service spec provides full user and group support, so uh, you know, including home directories and login shells, um, and which users should belong to which group, as you can see up there. Um, you can also check the file systems are mounted as you expect, uh, including the type and options. Here, the root file system is of type ext4 and is mounted read-write. And if you're unfortunate enough to have to support PHP, you can check the settings of that are correct too. Uh, another thing Service Spec is useful for is making network changes. Um, so you can uh, verify that your IP tables rules are as you expect, and you can actually limit this to a checking a rule is in a particular chain. And Service Spec doesn't only check the host that you're on; it can also look at other hosts from the host that you're on and try and connect that, uh, try and check that they're reachable on particular ports and particular you know, TCP or UDP. Service Spec doesn't forget about Windows. Um, there's a bunch of specific Windows uh, resource types um, that you can use in Service Spec. So just look at a few of those. Uh, file versioning. Uh, so here we're asserting that the wapi.dll should be version 7.6.7600.256. Um, IIS application pool, um, that there's a default app pool, it should exist uh, and should have .NET version 2.0 installed. Um, IIS website, default website, um, that it's enabled and running, and it's in the app pool, default app pool, and it has physical path, C, INET, pub, dub, dub, dub. Uh, can uh, examine the Windows registry for you, um, check that you've got uh, certain keys and values in your Windows registry. Um, what I really like about... Can you do the reverse? Uh, yeah. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, because it's a standard uh, RSpec thing. Uh, Basically. Pretty much anything in our spec you can test. You can say should not equal, should not be here. Yeah, anything yeah. like that. Yeah, that's part of the standard sort of aspect things, negation. Um, yeah, so what I really like about Service Spec on Windows is it uh, saves me from having to remember and or look up how to do these things myself because I don't normally touch Windows, so that's great. And we can you know, obviously test all of these things on multiple uh, versions of Windows all automatically. Um, so just a sort of quick recap where we are. Um, you can see our server spec is great for validating your assumptions about how servers are built. 
and how your application behaves after installation. For application developers, it's not a replacement for the tests you may be doing already, uh, such as unit tests or integration tests, but rather lets you test the overall behaviour of your application's install um, and that it runs successfully on all of your supported platforms. So we use Flapjack, uh, we use Service Spec in Flapjack, got the right way around this time. Um, so Flapjack is a monitoring tool. Uh, it does notification uh, routing and event processing. So in layman's terms, it takes check output from Nagios, Sensu and friends, um, applies filters and works out who to notify and how. Uh, for this, we're building packages for Debian, Ubuntu, and CentOS uh, using Omnibus. Um, we're using Service Spec to test our packages before they are made available to our testers. That would be the human kind of testers. Um, so, yeah, we build packages, we test them with Service Spec, and assuming that all passes, we publish them. Um, but what about the different operating systems and releases that we support? Um, we use Docker, and yes, this is the mandatory Docker reference in this talk, as all must have. Um, we take a pristine image of each distribution, add the newly created package, and run service spec on each Docker instance itself. Um, but not all tests are relevant to all operating systems. Service spec allows you to add an if block to your test, which we use to, you know, which we use to run some of our tests only on Debian-based operating systems, because that's all they're valid for. Um, here's a demonstration of our current service spec test suite, including a few bonus fails. So, yeah, that looks pretty similar to our spec. And, look at all those uh, pretty failures. Yeah, look at all those pretty failures. And you can run section by section um, like our spec and everything else. And uh, this actual script just brings up the Vagrant box and automatically applies Puppet uh, to install all the relevant packages and install Nagios and all that kind of crap. Um, and, yeah, just does it and runs the test. And then you come back how long later and it's all done, which is awesome. Does anyone have any questions? I can run with the microphone. Yeah. Uh, are there any plans to have a semantic understanding of the config files for like the SSH config? So rather than doing regex, you can actually say, does it have the key port and value? Because if port 22 was in a comment, it would still match that regex. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, certainly you can restrict, you know, you can say it should appear in this particular point in the file. Um, and you can obviously, um, you can obviously use carrot and dollar to, to kind of force it to, to match a full line of saying port 22, which means it can't have a comment in front of it. Um, but yeah, I don't think it does support key value pairs at this point. Um. You might be able to tie it in with Orgius, perhaps, which is uh, something you can use in Puppet to um, to mod to ver you know understands file formats, different you know, config files for different different systems. Maybe. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that it lets you do. Uh, OS version based checks um, to decide whether to run particular tests. Uh, can you do um, system introspection based tests, so like looking for particular config files to s figure out what kind of system you're on? Because uh, we had a similar capability in Beaker and we ended up rewriting it to do feature based testing because the OS based testing turned out to be a major maintainability hassle uh, where a new distro would come along and you your assumptions would all be wrong. So. And you couldn't uh, ascertain what, what, well, what version so of the distro? It, it became you ended up having to track all the distros to figure out which checks you should be running. Yeah. Uh, and so as people like did things like adopt systemd or switch from NTPD to crony and that sort of stuff, it became easier to just look for the thing you were interested in rather than worrying about what distro you were on. Yeah, right. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I believe that you can limit RSpec tests like that. So you would be able to limit, you would be able to use exactly the same thing to, um, to use service spec. Um, you know, you can wrap them all in describe blocks and, yeah, and use if blocks that way. So I think you can wrap the entire thing in if, if you want. 
Um, yeah, sorry if this has been answered already and I wasn't listening. Um, can, can it run as a service so it's constantly monitoring for your server the, 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 if the config goes out of, out of spec, um, you know, if some monkey logs in and uh, bypasses the, uh, the accepted uh, configuration method? I don't see why not. While true run, you know, bundle exec R spec, yep, spec, it's... service spec, whatever. Yeah. It's, uh, I know that some people actually hook it up to their Nagios or whatever monitoring system and execute the checks continuously uh, as part of the monitoring system. So if things fail, cool. okay. yeah, get notified. It's just, a, it's just a command line you run, so you hook it up to anything really, yeah. Uh, Bonus question, points then. if you uh, hook it up to a big flashing red light saying you've broken shit again. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's always the best. Or a giant hammer that hits people. Your fault. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. cool. Do we have any more questions? Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.